my adventure with Mankind Project uh, started um, uh, when I was in a, in a very, very difficult place. In late, uh, late 1983, I told Shar I wanted to separate. I was suicidally depressed. We had signed up for a, um, um, a couple's workshop that I, I found in the newspaper, and the guy running the workshop was named Bill Kauf. And I, I called Bill uh, and said, um, well, we're, 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 we're separated, we're not, we're not coming, you know, I don't want to come to your workshop. There's a few questions over my life that have changed, changed my life, and this is one of them. He said, uh, well, do, do you have any children? Well, yeah, I had two, two young sons. He said, well, even if you get divorced, uh, you still need to be in a relationship with your wife. And at that time, I was like, oh, crap, really? I <laughs> but I said, oh, okay. Okay, I'll come to this workshop, and but I want I want to make sure that you don't try to convince me to get together. That I'll just be there, you know. The reality is, Bill forgot his promise, and so I didn't didn't like the workshop. I didn't like Bill, but something happened in the workshop. What happened in the workshop is he mentioned there was another workshop in town called Understanding Yourself and Others. And that was really a good workshop. And I was so depressed and so desperate that I was like, oh, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll do that one. <laughs> Just <laughs> whatever, whatever. So now it's January of 1984, 1984. Uh, I'm still depressed and this, um, this workshop um, understanding yourself and others was a, was primarily focused on the ability to um, um, be emotionally present. There was a poem, and you had to be emotionally present during during each word. Um, well, with with my with my training in the Marine Corps <laughs> and my training as an engineer for GM, I, I didn't have many emotional skills. In fact, um, I had none. I, in fact, um, any part of emotions scared the hell out of me. I didn't want anything to do with it. So I'm at this, I'm at this understanding yourself and others workshop and people are being emotional and I, I, I just, I, I, I gotta get out of here. But I, I stayed, I stayed. And what happened, the, 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 the most they could get me to do emotionally was do jumping jacks while saying, I love chocolate. That was, that was my workshop. <laughs> so, so um, and, and it, was, it, was, it was painful because, yeah, I was 40, 40 years old and, and uh, my emotional body had been completely shut down and all of a sudden here's people trying to get me to be emotionally expressive and I'm like, I don't want anything to do with you people. You're crazy. S nevertheless, something happened at the workshop and they were doing one a week, one a month and I says, could I, could I sign up? They called them assistants. Could I be an assistant? So I went to one next month, and I said, I loosened up a little bit. I said, well, these emotional things aren't, aren't all that bad. Um, and I went, to, I went to several in, in a row, a month of these understanding yourself and others. That program's now called Taking It Lightly. Um, and each one that I went to, some new part of me opened up, some part that I didn't know existed, some deep emotional part of me that was coming alive. Um, and it was maybe the third or fourth training. So I was you know, very much a novice, 
But all of a sudden I was getting, I, I was getting the idea. It was like, I, I was feeling this, I, I'm feeling like I'm home. The story is uh, there was a, a guy um, who was uh, uh, deep in shame. I said, I, you know, I know this guy's deep in shame. How did I know that? I, you know, I, I just did. And uh, so the woman running it, uh, Patricia Jarobi Clayson, I went up to her and I said, he's in shame. She says, yeah, I know. She says, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk in front of him with a glass of water and I'm gonna throw a glass of water on his crotch so he can really experience shame. Well, no, you can't do that. And I said, well, I did it anyway. <laughs> I did it anyway, and so, and so, um, uh, what happened? He he went he went into deep deep shame, so he was able to experience the shame, and he was able to to, to work through it. Um, and it's like, oh, oh, okay, this stuff is cool. So now, <laughs> this is a total. It's a new playground for me. I had no no clue what this was all about. But it was like, hey, that was fun. And so, and so what was going on is Bill Kouth's girlfriend at the time was also assisting or staffing. And Bill Kouth had the idea, uh, and I had met him in this couples workshop, he had the idea that let's put, a, um, let's put together a men's workshop. And first of all, um, Bill and I probably came from different parts of the planet. You know, he was, he was, he was uh, a card-carrying hippie, and I, I was uh, an engineer for GM who wore three-piece suits and all that. So we were, our worldviews, our way of dealing with things were totally different. So, um, so I thought, this, this guy's really queer. Queer in an odd sense. Odd and, you know, I, I don't want anything to do with it. He kept, he kept bugging me, we, you know, because I kept, I kept doing more cool things. And his girlfriend, Mary, would say, you know, you gotta, you gotta do this. Um, this she kept saying that it, it, I, was, I was what Bill needed. So um, Bill, for those, for those of you who know Bill Kouth, is anything if he's not persistent. He just gets, you know, he's like a dog with a bone. He will not, not ever, ever give up. So I, I'm starting to come out of my depression. I'm starting to feel a little better. Bill is still bugging me. I don't, Bill, there's no way in hell I'm ever gonna do a men's workshop. But, you know, that's your, you're nuts. I'm not going to do it. What happened? Now it's still 1984. It's I think it was August '84. Um, again, a couple things happened in my life that are just just happened. He calls me on a Wednesday and says, "Hey, uh, there's a there's a workshop in California in Berkeley about uh, about men's work. Let's go." I said, "Bill." How many times do I have to say no? <laughs> How many times do I have to say no? Well, that Friday I was on a plane with Bill from Milwaukee to uh, California. And it was, maybe if I go, he'll leave me alone. You know, it was that, that, was, that was my attitude. So what happened in, in Berkeley was, uh, was life-changing, literally for me. And, I will say for a mankind project, um, and what what happened uh, briefly was there was there's 150 men at called Men, Sex, and Power, and um, the the instructions were you have to sign a piece of paper. They're going to be taking video of the entire workshop, and they can use it any way they want. Well, I was this really, really important GM engineer, you know, besides these are California weirdos, so I, I don't want anything to do. I'm not signing it. I'm not gonna sign it. 
200, uh, uh, 20 guys are out there with me, then there's 10 guys, and then there's two guys, and then there's just me. And I'm, it's like an hour into the thing, and it was, it, it, it was expensive you know, to fly out there. And so finally, this guy running the show, uh, they, they tell him, you know, don't let, him, let him go in. He doesn't have to sign it. And so uh, what, what happened then was um, he had this big boom mic on and he's very intimidating. He says, why? Why didn't you sign it? <laughs> Why didn't you sign the paper? <laughs> and, and I said, well, I, I don't know you. I don't. I don't trust you. I, why should I sign a paper? You know. I, I, you know. I don't know you. Um, and then, and then he said the sentence that literally changed my life. He said, "Have you ever trusted anybody?" And I literally collapsed on the floor sobbing. And somehow I, I was ready to hear that. But it's like, no, I had never, never trusted anybody. And somehow, I'm 41 years old, somehow that it, it was, you know, sort of like God just whacked me on the head. And <laughs> It was, it was a major, major thing in, in, internally. So, uh, and of course I didn't know what was going on. The next day, the next day, and Bill was, Bill Kauth was there. I said, Bill, you know, we, we, we could make a men's workshop. We could, we could create a men's workshop and get this. We could make a better one than this guy does. <laughs> so, so the irony of that is I had been probably to six workshops with understanding yourself and others, and all of a sudden uh, I am saying, I'll, not only will I do it, we can do a much better job. That's when Ron Herring got involved, and that's when the three, the, the three months, you know, September, no, October, November, de December, we sat down at my house and we just knocked out what became the, uh, the, the New Warrior training. And the, the, the um, I'll take a minute more. The interesting part of, of the, that part of the story was I had never heard of Jungian stuff. Um, I think Bill may have, but we didn't, we didn't have any guidance from a Jungian perspective. Uh, Robert Moore hadn't published his book. Um, Robert Bly hadn't published his book, and so the the how how it was created is uh, many many folks are interested. So how the hell did you know? Yeah, I, I get how you got involved, but how did how how did this actually happen? How did you actually put this thing together, which has lasted so many years? And the, the story is the three of us sat around the table and, uh, and said, uh, you know, okay, we're, what are we doing? Well, let's create a, 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 an adventure for men. Men like adventures. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sounded good. Okay, so what's the first thing we should do? And one of us would have an idea. Um, and in this case, Bill said, well, we should greet them. You know, we should have a warm greeting. And... Okay, and if the other two agreed, that's, that became the first thing. Okay, then, then, then what should we do? Um, I think we should take all their belongings away. That was my idea. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which, which, you know, in, in, in reality was hark back to boot camp in the Marine Corps. You know, it's like you, you strip people of their identity. And most of what we put together in, for January 1985, the, most of that still exists today in a much, much more sophisticated form. But we had put it together. 
we put it together without any overall academic or you know like we're 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 trying to change the world we were just trying to create a workshop uh to, to start you know a men's group or two in milwaukee that was it so uh I, i've mentioned that the original um protocol which was really three pages <laughs> um was um was really this the description you know um, greeting, Kauth, and it was just a description of what it was in somebody's name. The original plan was to have each man do three affirmations. This is significant. Um, and um, the, the plan was each man would would say, as a man among men, I am, and then do a little affirmation. And then when he finished that, five minutes, as a man among women, I am, fine, five minutes. And then as a man in the world, I am. So we had allotted 15 minutes per man. You know, fine, we're, we're doing, we, we thought we were, you know. So that was the plan. The reality was, <laughs> the reality of what happened in the first training was, as a man among men I am, and there was 18 men, it was, I don't know, two or three in the morning. Uh, we'd been working all afternoon and all, all evening and into the morning. And um, we're still on as a, as a man among men. <laughs> we're still... So the, the, the point of that is, is, I think, really important. The point is that what we call the guts process sort of invented itself. It, it invented itself um, in, in the sense, in, in, it, in that case, um, Bill wasn't particularly skilled at that part, but Ron Herring and I were, so we were able to follow follow and, and, and stay with the men. And uh, so what, what we call the guts process, which is pretty central to what we do, was created um, by the men and our, I guess you say, our willingness to follow them. L literally, we, you know, okay, okay this, isn't, this isn't the plan. <laughs> What we're supposed to be doing is this, but okay, we'll stay with you. There's, there's also, uh, um, there's much talk about the hero's journey. That terminology did not come in until sometime in the future. It was not, we were not doing a hero's journey. Um, and the beginning of that was, um, <clears throat> we had guys starting to come from Chicago to Milwaukee and they, and they say, well, you, you, y'all must have studied Jungian psychology. None of us had. And, um, and they kept, you know, it's like, well, there's a young institute in Chicago. Maybe you guys should go down there and, and find out about it. So, uh, <clears throat> actually, Shar and I, my wife Shar, uh, decided to go to a workshop that was being held in Chicago at the Young Institute, and none other than Robert Moore was giving a lecture. <laughs> so, and um, so this is now three years into the work. As, as a, so we had done, we had done four trainings in '85, four in '86, and now it's the end of '87. And uh, Robert's talking about all kinds of things, but he's, he, he starts talking about something called initiation. So three years into this, the first time I heard the word initiation, which is associated with hero's journeys, right? And so, so I'm listening and he says, well, there's, there's this part of initiation and there's, there's the separation, there's this part, and there's the this. And, 
And I just got so excited. I just got so excited. I literally called, when I got home, I called up uh, Bill Kyle and Ron Herring, and I said, do you know what? We're doing initiations. <laughs> Three years into um, doing our, our workshops, uh, our trainings, uh, we, we said, okay, we're close enough to doing what an initiation is. Don't know how we got here, we, but we are. Now that we have a map, this is a map again. Now that we have a map and an understanding of what initiation is, we then uh, were able to delve into the, uh, okay, what is an initiation? What's a hero's journey? What, you know, it, and that sort of evolved slowly. Um, so it was really the, 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 real, the real core idea initially was we just want to have a men's adventure. Nothing about initiation, nothing about a hero's journey. In a real sense, um, what we have today, the New Warrior Training and Mankind Project, has, well, you could say in some ways it was accidental. Some of the stuff was accidental. It, were, it wasn't planned. Uh, but maybe a deeper cut would be that it was telling us it needed to evolve. It needed to grow, and some of us were in a position to say, oh, oh okay. So there was uh, um, early, early on in the, the history of what's now MKP, there was a, um, a strong tendency to, um, to, I guess, listen to that which can't be heard. Listen, listen to sort of a, a, a spiritual voice. 